Okay, it's a little different now. Good morning. It's a, it's a real privilege to be speaking before all of you, so thank you so much. Uh, King George III ascended the throne in 1760 when he was only 22 years old. He later married Sophie Charlotte from Germany when she was just 17 years old. Despite the marital bliss, my eyes start to glaze over. The next thing I know, there's an apex of power, the Whig party is doing something, so is Grenville, too bad I didn't catch his first name. And the Stamp Act is enacted in 1766, much to the consternation of the colonists. While all of these, and trust me, there were many, many more, proper names and historical dates fast and furiously flying by me during this graduate history class I attended last year, one idea dominates my thoughts. This professor probably never attended avid training. <laughs> For if he had, he wouldn't be standing imperiously behind a podium reciting the litany of British rulers from the Middle Ages to the 1700s. He was obviously enamored by his subject, but he seemed indifferent if his students shared his same passion. Clearly, this professor needed an avid intervention. And several years ago, so did I. When I take classes or attend conferences, the presentation of the material is always held up to avid standards. I find myself without prompting, wondering, what would avid do? How would I avidize this material? How would I take a laundry list of long dead rulers from Britain and transform those dusty relics to something vibrant and meaningful to my teenage students? How could I take the dissemination of this information and make it more student-centered? How, and here's the important inquiry, could I get the students themselves to derive meaning and become active participants in the learning, not passive note-takers? AVID, you see, has taught me to ask those types of questions. The AVID methodologies have infused my teaching, the lessons, the assignments, and the learning experiences. Those of you who are AVID trained, whether it's in your content area or elective, probably have had a similar profession transforming epiphany. In addition to changing how I approach teaching a discrete skill or literary work, I teach 10th grade English, AVID has also altered my expectations for me and my students. I realize that the best way I can show my students respect is to expect great things from them. If I expect minor insight or effort, well, that's most likely what they'll offer. And that low expectation is absolutely a disgrace because our students, they are, are capable of great achievements and insights. Thank you. Here's what some of my 12th grade AVID elective students said when asked, how do AVID trained teachers treat you? Quote, teachers expect you to use skills such as organization and time management. Quote, AVID teachers expect more leadership to be shown in classes from AVID students. Quote, they prepare you for college, not just to get work done and pass class. Quote, teachers expect students to work to their best ability and learn it, not just get it done. Quote, avid trained teachers expect more. Quote, they care more. They will look at all your classes to help you improve overall. They get to know you personally. They're more caring. And sometimes they argue with you because they love you. And here is my personal favorite. One student looked thoughtfully and said, you're our avid mom, we're a family. Another said, avid teachers act like parents. They push you to improve and not settle. So in addition to giving me a solid foundation for teaching, engaging methodologies, strong support, the importance of rigor, the confidence to demand it, avid has given me something else. 16 amazing children. I'm both proud and honored to call my 12th graders my own. My two biological children are 24 and 22 years old, not too far removed in age from my 16 avid children. 
for all of my children, my desires are the same. Acceptance into a good college, success in navigating that daunting first year, the skills to succeed, the drive to make themselves and the world a better place. Without the support of AVID, I would not have had the means and vision to help all of my children believe that they are capable of achieving great things. In the long run, being able to say who wed who isn't important. So while the marriage of King George III to Sophie Charlotte may provide fodder for a brief discussion, AVID students aren't focused on the who, what, and when, but on conducting a deep academic-based discussion, and that, not the marriage of King George III to Sophie Charlotte, has made all the difference. Thank you.